Interesting. Uh, so today's talk is, is titled uh, Development of Multi-Factor Authentication for Vehicle Access Control based uh, on um, ANPR, right? Automatic Number Plate Recognition and RFID technologies. Uh, I, I should mention upfront here that uh, this was done as part of Friday's dissertation, so master's dissertation, when he was pursuing his master of science in computer science. And I think he graduated, is it last year or the year before last? So Friday, uh, the floor is yours. I, I, I neglected to mention, yeah, I always mention here for those that are joining us for the first time, we record all our conversations. Um, so this entire interaction is going to be recorded and then it will be publicly shared online. All right. Friday, the floor is yours. Thanks. Um, uh, first and foremost, I'd love to thank you most sincerely, Dr. Piri, for uh, inviting me to give this talk. Um, I, I hope that through this presentation, I'll add one or two fundamentals uh, to the students that are, are looking forward to doing their dissertation and that uh, possibly their presentation may be, may be better uh, since they will have learned one or two things from uh, uh, the people that have gone uh, before them. Uh, so today, uh, just as alluded by Doc, uh, we are going to look at development of uh, a two-factor authentication for vehicle access control based on automatic number plate uh, recognition and radio frequency identification uh, technologies. Um, uh, this, um, just as Doc had already put it, uh, was part of my um, uh, uh, study, uh, that is when I was pursuing my master's in computer science. Uh, so this is the outline of our, um, of our talk. We'll look at introduction, the background uh, uh, to research, then literature review methodology results, discussion, then references. Okay, um, so on introduction, we we are quite cognizant, cognizant to the fact that uh, security and um, uh, motor vehicle access controls to many premises, especially those where security is a priority, uh, have actually become quite eminent. Now, automatic number plate uh, recognition and uh, radio frequency identification technologies have widely been used okay, to offer solutions in many vehicle control or automated systems. Uh, if we uh, look at the, the recent introduced targets in Zambia, uh, mostly they would actually use the automa uh, auto uh, automated number plate uh, recognition technology to be able uh, to bill uh, the, uh, the road users. Uh, RFID also is quite, the, um, quite widely used um, uh, in, in many instances. So now the two technologies in this case are going to be combined uh, to offer us a very secure motor vehicle access control. Now in this study, a robust multi-factor authentication access control mechanism for vehicles in and out of a car parking area uh, using those two technologies has been uh, developed. Now, um, whenever one is doing a research, there must be a problem. Uh, without a problem, there is no cause uh, to, to do a research. So now, uh, the problem statement for my research basically arises from the fact that the University of Zambia has been facing quite a great challenge in the management of vehicle access controls. Now, the current system that they are using to, uh, to either allow or deny entry into the university or certain car parking areas uh, is manual and it's very ineffective and it causes congestion if they mean to apply it uh, 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 so well. So it is from this background that I saw a necessity that we need to find a problem that is existing in as far as uh, um, uh, management of uh, vehicle access uh, to the university premises as well as to uh, the uh, car parking areas. Okay, now uh, in the picture there, uh, you can actually see uh, one of the times when University of Zambia, I think there was a rumor of uh, a vehicle missing and so forth, so now there were some restrictions on the vehicles that are entering and vehicles that are coming in where the guards are supposed to record every vehicle that comes in 
and also uh, take note of the drivers that are driving. So you'd find that a very long queue uh, would actually arise in such instances. Now, um, it is from that background uh, that actually uh, this uh, research uh, is emanating from. Now, uh, besides, uh, besides the hypothesis that I have uh, just uh, given a hint of, uh, there was um, a survey to cut out. Now, this survey was trying to, uh, 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 to bring out the actual problem that was existing in as far as the admittance of vehicles into and outside the university, as well as admittance of vehicles into the car parking areas. So now, uh, the survey reviewed uh, the following. One, car thefts uh, within campus. Uh, some really expressed fear that their vehicles are not safe. And some actually um, uh, uh, did review that uh, some vehicles were actually stolen within the campus premises. Now, vehicle activities as well uh, do not have any records at all with the current system. When a vehicle enters into a car parking area, there's no record that is uh, kept which can be retrieved when it's wanted or when it's needed. Even when the vehicle leaves uh, the car parking area, there's no uh, record at all that you can refer to uh, who drove away the vehicle or uh, what time the vehicle went out. Now, unauthorized vehicle gain access also into and through campus premises. So this is one of the problems you find that uh, in designated car parking areas, unauthorized area, uh, vehicles would go park there, thereby um, uh, reducing the space, uh, the, uh, space for uh, car parks uh, for the lecturers or other staff. And that in itself actually, Causes a lot of confusion, uh, uh, cause a lot of confusion, or causes a lot of confusion. So, um, so now uh, it is from that background then uh, that the main aim of this research was to develop a two-factor authentication for vehicle access control. Uh, then uh, to control, in order to control the access of vehicles to the university premises and car parking spaces using a, a boom gate based on the two technologies, which is the ANPR uh, and the RFID. Uh, then also to provide vehicle security. So from the underlying problem that we looked at where vehicles are stolen within the university premises, uh, then this research would actually ensure that vehicles are protected. Uh, also to provide vehicle activity records. Uh, there is need for, or to have a system that is able to record the vehicle that is coming into the campus and the vehicle that is going out of the campus uh, for, uh, for the sake of uh, tracking if there's anything wrong, then you can easily uh, track who came in, uh, who went out, and what time, what time did something miss, and what time did this vehicle go. So in that way, basically, you can uh, try to track some activities that are going on uh, within the university premises. Okay, so now, uh, the main objectives are basically to develop the two-factor authentication system model for access control based on RFID and optic character recognition uh, for uh, automatic number plate recognition. Then also to develop a two-factor authentication barrier system prototype, okay, for vehicle access in and out of the university and car parts based on the model uh, in one. Okay, so a prototype basically uh, is put up to just verify that uh, the technology uh, that is uh, that is being discussed is workable. Now, uh, arising from uh, the objectives are actually uh, research questions. Uh, now, uh, a research question basically uh, is uh, a question which, when it's answered, uh, it should be able uh, to fulfill the objective. So when you answer in your research, 
in your research, when you answer the research question, then it simply means that the objective is attained or the objective is, is met. So now in this case, uh, the research questions are coming from the, uh, the objectives that you have. So from the two objectives uh, that uh, we have in this research, we have these uh, research questions. How can we develop a two-factor authentication model uh, based on uh, RFID and OCR? Uh, for automatic number plate recognition, then to what extent can we develop a two-factor authentication barrier system prototype for vehicle access in and out of uh, a car park? Then uh, um, the significance of the study is basically that one, there are increased number of cases of vehicle thefts within campus. Uh, then also there is a scramble for parking spaces uh, in the car parking areas within the campus premises. Okay, so that is uh, actually increasing at a very faster rate because uh, more people are uh, owning vehicles now uh, and even students now are coming with the vehicles. So uh, parking space is usually an issue and this inconvenience most, in most cases, uh, lecturers who are supposed to meet the needs of 100 students at a go, uh, as compared to one student who is going to listen to that lecturer. So uh, the scramble for parking spaces is an issue that uh, can really be sorted out by this research. Now also non-authorized vehicles find access through campus premises. We have had accidents in the University of Zambia where uh, someone is just using the, uh, from the Kamru uh, route, wanting to join the greatest road, and then along the way, because they're overspeeding, they're in a rush for whatever reason, uh, and someone was, was bashed and lost life. Now, um, that access, uh, which is not authorized in the university premises, should actually be banned. Uh, the current system uh, uses the security guards. Uh, who do stand there, then ask uh, whether someone is, uh, has any business with UNSA, and then if he has got any business with UNSA, then you'd be allowed in without any record being taken, okay? And yet maybe someone is just uh, using the UNSA premises as, as a route. Then um, uh, no vehicle activity record is being taken and kept for uh, any future reference. So if a vehicle is stolen, it's very difficult to track who drove it out, and where did it go, through which route did it use. Then also the inefficient method of, of vehicle control, uh, where guards are the ones that determine whether the vehicle should uh, come through or not come through. Okay, then now um, uh, the ethical issues. Uh, so ethical issues were adhered to. Uh, one, the issue of confidentiality and also non-persecution of respondents to the survey that was carried out. So a sample was, was taken and then uh, questionnaires were distributed to, uh, to respondents. And then the assurance to respondents was that uh, their data was confidential and none of them would be held responsible if anything comes up. Then adhered to honest reporting of data, results, methods, and procedures. Then adhered to owner patents and copyright uh, throughout the research process as well as in the reporting. Then also obtained ethical clearance uh, from the University of Zambia. Now, the scope of the study, uh, I think it's important to declare that um, now, as much as this uh, research outcome can fundamentally be applied to many institutions, uh, such as the military premises, uh, central banks, uh, data centers, power stations, maximum security prisons, and or any other restricted premises, now we will confine our analysis to one of the higher learning institutions, uh, which is the University uh, of Zambia. So that was the literature review that was, uh, that was done and related works. So among the literature review, 
uh, the database that was searched. Um, um, none of such research was actually seen to have been undertaken anywhere. The only one that was uh, a bit closer uh, is the one that uh, Mohande, Mohande et al. Uh, did, uh, which was uh, actually implementing at least a combination of uh, the ALP ARA and the ARAFIT uh, technologies. Now, in order to um, uh, in order to restrict entrance into one of the uh, one of the functions, one of the functions, uh, I think the Ramadan function, uh, where each group of people is given specific days to access the premises. Uh, so now, uh, in his study, uh, he did uh, uh, use the Arafite to deny. He did use the RFI to deny access, and then he used the ANP error in order to track uh, the offenders. Now, the two technologies were never integrated in order to, uh, keep, uh, to, uh, to give an integrated system that would function, um, uh, that would function as a single, single unit. Okay, so that is the only research that came closer uh, to this research. Now, the methodology that was used, uh, the first thing was to carry out a survey uh, to just try to ensure that the problem exists at the University of Zambia. So a purposive uh, sampling was used, and then also a questionnaire was, um, uh, was done and then distributed uh, to the sample uh, that was taken, and then now the responses um, uh, were put together and uh, resulting into this research. Then literature review, um, uh, I, we looked at the multi-factor authentication literature review, then also literature review on radio frequency identification, as well as the automatic number plate uh, recognition. Now, um, during the methodology, we had to assess uh, the current system that is being used for vehicle access into and out, uh, out of the UNSA premises and in the car parking areas. Now, what, what happens is that when the vehicle uh, approaches, um, uh, say for, for example, it's entering into UNSA premises, either using uh, loops entrance or maybe greatest entrance um, uh, or the marshland entrance, uh, entrance that side, um, what will happen is when the vehicle comes, uh, the guard is going first of all to uh, block that vehicle and then uh, check whether the vehicle has got a Unza sticker and then if it has, then the vehicle is going to be permitted. Or if the vehicle doesn't have, uh, then the, uh, the guard is going to ask uh, the driver where he's going. And if it's found that the driver uh, needs to be maybe um, okay, I'm, uh, I'm combining the entrances, but each of them have got different rules. The cam loops and uh, the cam loops um, entrance. Uh, the restriction is that only the employees are supposed to use that entrance, and also the marshland entrance. But the main entrance, that's where visitors are supposed to enter. Uh, to enter through. So these other two entrances, where only the members of staff are supposed to use. Uh, they would check uh, whether the driver has got an ID uh, uh, belonging to UNSA, whether he's a staff or a student. If he doesn't have any, he's supposed to use the other entrance. So that is the procedure there. So if one doesn't have the ID, then he's returned. Okay, so uh, if doesn't have the ID or the UNSA sticker, then he's returned. Okay, if he has then uh, the security is supposed to record uh, the vehicle uh, into the book and also the driver and then allow uh, the, uh, the driver to proceed. But if he doesn't have, uh, then uh, he's actually retained. Okay, so this, this is the current system that is existing. So now the difficulties here are actually that uh, the recording part is not at all done. 
and it's indeed very difficult, and it would con uh, um, uh, bring about so much congestion uh, if it is to be strictly followed uh, as the regulations. Now, the current developed system has uh, two inputs. So we have two inputs there. Uh, input that is coming from uh, the, uh, the automatic number plate recognition and also input that is coming from the ID uh, of, um, uh, of the user. And then we have the output on the other side where now we have the boom gate uh, that should be able to open or close for one to enter or not enter. Then in between there, we have a process. So uh, we have a process there, then we have the input, then we have the output. So now, um, the system has five configuration modes, uh, which we are going to, I think, view later. So um, the system would first of all obtain through the uh, infrared sensors, they would obtain uh, immediately the, the vehicle is approaching, uh, then the system should be able to sense that the vehicle is coming through the IR sensors and then actuate the camera to take the image. Then when the camera takes the image, uh, the, um, uh, there's now uh, the segmentation, the, the cognition of the number plate area, the mission, and now the number plate recognition, uh, and thereafter now, uh, the numbers are sorted out through optical character recognition and then are taken to the process. And then also the RFID, uh, the RFID attack uh, is obtained from the driver. So at the entrance, you have, um, okay. So at the entrance, you have, of course, say the camera there. Okay, the camera there. Then you have got the RFID reader, the RFID reader. Uh, so if the driver has got a card in the car, the moment he is approaching, the camera is going to take the number plate, then the RFID reader is going to capture uh, the, uh, the, the card, and then uh, the two are uh, input into the process. Then a decision is made whether to allow someone or not to allow somebody. Okay, and then there's a light there that would, would indicate uh, that, well, you can go for green, you can go for red, it's no, Okay, and then they would be retained. Then there's an area there which is able to communicate to the security center where whatever uh, information is captured here, uh, that information is sent to the database, okay, to the database which is, um, uh, which is here. So the central database uh, would actually store the uh, information that is coming from all the, uh, the access points. Okay, so now these are some of the results uh, from the survey that was, was done. So um, about 27% uh, of the respondents uh, actually recommended uh, that um, an electronic system would be better for, their for the security of their vehicles and also um, uh, for record keeping. Then about, uh, about 70% um, Okay, so about 70% felt that they wouldn't love their vehicles to be driven out of campus or out of uh, the parking spaces uh, by another driver without their authority. Okay, then uh, about 65% actually had knowledge of car theft within, uh, within the campus premises. So uh, these results uh, gave uh, the impetence to proceed with, uh, with the research. Okay, so now uh, this was the circuit that was built and then simulated through uh, uh, Proteus. Then now a, a prototype was constructed. So now, um, just as I said that um, uh, this system uh, has five configurable modes. 
Now, the five configurable modes would actually uh, give you an option to make uh, the following settings. Uh, say, for instance, uh, the entrance gates uh, from, um, um, uh, from Kamloops route and also uh, the gates from uh, um, uh, from the other side, uh, yeah, yeah, Rufanyama, Rufanyama entrance. Those two only allows uh, either students or members of staff to use them. Then the rest of the visitors should use the main. So there. Um, would uh, the system could be configured to either allow a registered vehicle, a registered vehicle, or uh, someone that has a card ID, just an ID which is powered with it, an ID which is powered with the uh, with the RFID, the same IDs that are issued to students, that are issued to the members of staff. But then you just power them with it, uh, with a radio frequency uh, identification uh, circuit. Okay, so those two gates can actually be configured uh, in this category. So it's either someone has got a vehicle registered, or he has an ID, a, a, an ID um, uh, for the for the university. Then the main entrance, which allow visitors. With that one, it can actually be open, but just take photos of every vehicle that comes. Okay, so just take photos of every vehicle that comes. So each vehicle that comes, it just captures the number plate and then store it in the database. Okay, um, then the, uh, the car parking areas now. Uh, the car parking areas, in most cases, the car parking areas are demarcated. There's a car parking area for NS, for engineering, car parking area for education, uh, a car parking area for, for mines, and so forth. Now, in these car parking areas, the only people that are allowed to use them are actually members of staff. So now, uh, since only members of staff are allowed to use, there is a demand. There's a demand that one should have uh, the ID. So there's a demand that one should have the ID. So now since one should have the ID to enter into, but also students have IDs. Though uh, the IDs can be programmed in order to allow only members of staff. But now at the same time, again, there's a threat for motor vehicle theft, of which actually vehicles have been stolen in the car park. Then uh, come through from uh, the entrance of the uh, of the car parking uh, areas, okay, for the members of staff. So now, um, in order to curb that theft, uh, there is now an addition for uh, the uh, automatic number plate, um, uh, uh, number plate recognition uh, technology. Okay. So now, um, what happens here? If you are going to add them, if you are going to add them, the ID and the automatic number plate uh, recognition, then it simply means that for one to drive in uh, the car parking area for members of staff, he must have the ID. And also, the vehicle has to be registered, or else it will not allow. Uh, now, uh, this in itself uh, is quite very important, especially with incidences of theft. Uh, if someone uh, gets to drive a vehicle that does not belong to him, even if he has uh, a, an ID card and the, the vehicle is registered, uh, if that vehicle is not registered uh, corresponding to his ID, then he will not be allowed access. Or if he does not have an ID, he takes the vehicle, he will not be allowed access. So in that way, basically, uh, theft would, do, would, would be curbed. So, um, this is what the system uh, the system provides. So uh, that is the prototype constructed. Okay, so the prototype system constructed allowed card configuration, denied entry to non-programmed cards, allowed entry to cards that were programmed, uh, recorded the date and the card name uh, transacted. 
Okay, so uh, when you are going out, your vehicle number plate is going to be recorded. Also, um, the card, uh, the card uh, details are also going to be uh, to be to be recorded. So uh, in that case, uh, we see that the driver who is driving the vehicle will be in the database, and the vehicle itself will be uh, in the database. Okay, so now, um, okay, so that is now the process that goes on. Okay, so the prototype system constructed, read the number plate input, then pre-processed the number plate, recognized the text uh, in, the, uh, in the number plate. Uh, then, um, okay, so, so we have the number plate there. Uh, being uh, read, then the number plate uh, after after being uh, photographed, uh, 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 it is grayed. So after graying it, uh, the number plate region is detected. So the number plate region is detected. So after detecting the number plate region, uh, the characters are segmented. After the characters are segmented, they come out and then uh, be read in the in the text editor. So now, uh, the two technologies integrated offers five configurable access states to meet different access point needs, uh, just as I stated earlier on. Now, these are the different states of configuration uh, that are met uh, by, uh, by the uh, integration of the two technologies. The first state is that users with registered tag or vehicle would actually be allowed in. So if you approach uh, the entrance, uh, say for instance uh, of Rufanyama, uh, Rufanyama entrance, uh, the moment the system uh, reads either the number plate or here keyword is O, so it's odd. Okay, so any of the two will actually permit uh, 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 permit exit or entrance into uh, into the premises. Then the second one uh, is that um, the, the users can, can access uh, if they have a tag only. Now we, ha we know that uh, most students who, who only have IDs, uh, their vehicles would not really be, uh, be registered. So with them, they just use an ID. The moment an ID is sensed, then the system opens and they leave. Uh, they are laid into the into the premises. Okay, so with an ID only, uh, or a, a, the the boom gate opens. Then the third stage is users using uh, using the uh, the vehicle only. So a user can just use the vehicle and gain access. Yeah, uh, possibly uh, Mr. Kube can. He, uh, can you mute the mic? Yeah, so, so the third stage, the third stage is that users uh, with registered vehicles uh, would only, would actually have access uh, just the moment they approach uh, the boom gate. So just a number plate, uh, the system does the process, the boom gate opens, and then uh, they are let in. And uh, then the, uh, the fourth stage is that uh, a user needs to be authenticated uh, from both uh, the, uh, uh, the tag, which is the ID, and the vehicle number plate. So a user uh, should be able uh, to, uh, to have both the vehicle registered and an ID as a member of staff. So this would be very ideal uh, in car parking areas or in areas that have got quite um, uh, strict security uh, security needs. Uh, then the fifth uh, stage is recording only. So like the main entrance to the university premises from the greatest road, okay, there, there will be no need to have uh, these restrictions uh, uh, because the mandate there of the security point is to record every vehicle that comes in or every vehicle that goes out. So that's the mandate of the security personnel. So now as such, 
All that we need from that access point is just the number plate being captured uh, of the vehicle that is entering. Uh, so just the number plate are being captured. So if someone uh, just comes, then he just has uh, a straight a straight way. Uh, there are no restrictions, so he would enter, uh, do his business with Unza, and then go back. So mostly very ideal for visitors. Uh, they would not be inconvenienced, but at the same time, um, uh, 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 their access to the premises uh, is recorded. So now, uh, this is the system. Uh, so this is the prototype that was, was constructed, and this is, um, uh, this is its, um, uh, its behavior uh, with, one, um, uh, with one system. Sorry, I need to play this. So Friday, we can hardly hear the audio there. Maybe you can you can maybe help narrate what's happening so that we oh, oh, understand okay. what's going on. Oh, 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 all right, thank you, Doc. Oh, okay, so um, uh, what it is here is that uh, the vehicle is approaching the boom gate. Now, the moment uh, the vehicle approaches, the boom gate uh, reads the RFID card, then the boom gate opens. So when the boom gate opens, the vehicle, uh, the boom gate will remain open not until the vehicle passes when it crawls. So this one basically is going to uh, prevent a situation where the boom gate hits on the car. So the moment the boom, the car passes, then the boom gate closes. Okay. So now, uh, in a situation where, um, where say, uh, someone is just. So, uh, near, near the boom gate with uh, an RFID card, uh, but there is no car, he doesn't have a vehicle. Uh, he has approached the, uh, the access point, and then the card is introduced to the system. The boom gate will not open at all. Why? Because of the absence of the car. So even if you have got a card, the car is not there, uh, the boom gate will not open. Now, at the same time, um, if say for for instance, okay, now that's a situation where the car approaches and the card is there, the boom gate opens, okay, and then the car passes. But now, if someone does not have the card, the car is there, but there's no card. The car approaches the boom gate. You find that the uh, the boom gate does not open at all. Okay, why? Because of the absence of the card. So basically that is that is the prototype uh, for uh, for the system. And it would actually be very, very efficient as compared to uh, as compared to the current system where guards uh, should be uh, should record and also should allow entrance or entrance to the premises. And in most cases uh, at, at times yeah, as I experienced at times, they would say, no, hey, come and strap the boss, uh, and you're not eligible to, uh, to, to go in, and then they allow you because of commands. Okay, so uh, is such human, uh, human uh, in, uh, you know, interaction is avoided. So now, um, in conclusion, uh, the research has established the need for a secure electronic vehicle access control system that will protect vehicles from theft through the provision of a two-factor authentication vehicle access control. Then uh, a five configurable authentication states uh, has been established for implementing 
to match number plate recognition and the radio frequency identification uh, technologies. So, um, uh, so now, uh, recommendation for this research. So the recommendations are forwarded to the University <coughs> of Zambia for an efficient and effective management of vehicle access controls within and into the university premises, uh, automating vehicle controls using RFID and um, automatic number plate recognition technologies who control access, monitor, and track vehicle activities in the campus. In the campus. Now, automating the vehicle access control system will bring about effective vehicle monitoring system. Uh, it will avoid time wastage, will prevent vehicle thefts, and enable a avail uh, availability of parking space uh, for members uh, of staff. Okay, so um, um, students are free to uh, take up the challenge and, and, and still do some, uh, some future work. Okay, uh, you can do some literature review and you, if you find that there are gaps uh, within, uh, within what I've, I've mentioned here, uh, then please you can, you can take it up. So when the vehicle is crossing any of the access points, so in the system you can actually include um, a, notification, a notification to the owner of the vehicle whenever it's maybe exiting UNSA, an SMS is sent to the mobile uh, of the um, uh, yeah of the owner of the vehicle, so that if it's a theft case, uh, then they can easily be sensitized. Okay, so uh, also uh, record the storage to a uh, cloud, and the vehicle activity reports can be accessed by the owner with log with log on credentials. So these are some of the future works that uh, that my colleagues can uh, can look at, and those are some of the uh, references that we are done. Uh, this work, the work uh, uh, in this uh, presentation, um, was published in the International Journal of Advanced Computer Science and Applica uh, Applications, uh, Volume Ten, Issue One of 2019. Okay, so you can uh, have access. Uh, to this presentation uh, from that publication. So this marks the end of the presentation. Uh, so please, if uh, there are any questions. Thank you so much, Friday. This, is, uh, it, this, this talk never gets old. I mean, this is the second time I'm, I'm listening to, to Mr. Chazanga give this talk, and it's, uh, it's, it's, it's always nice. Uh, it's a classic example of what a typical academic uh, piece of work is supposed to be like. Um, but I just want to draw people's attention, those that probably uh, found it a bit strange here. Most of what I was talking about could be linked to what we go through when we're passing through these so-called toll gates, right? Uh, I don't know if people have noticed, but when you're driving through these toll gates in Zambia, uh, there's usually a camera and you can actually notice that your number plate is being recorded somewhere. Now, I don't know, or I don't know if people in here know what, what those recordings are used for, but something to think about is what Friday is suggesting in here could be incorporated there as well, right? Also, those speed traps, right? When you're driving, uh, let's say, along Greatest Road, ask yourself, how exactly do they know that this is your vehicle, right? Turns out that they get a snapshot of your number plate and then there's some processing that happens behind the scenes. Now, whether or not they use OCR, like Friday suggesting here, or image classification is a completely different conversation, right? But also, uh, on that one, I wanted to link this to the talk that was given by, by Francis, and this is more specific to the CSC 57 foot one students, right? If you remember, Francis' approach is completely different from what Friday uh, did, uh, at least insofar as the uh, automatic number plate recognition mode is concerned. Francis took an image classification approach where he used the neural net, right? And specifically convolutional neural networks, if you remember, right? So questions to ask yourselves is, I mean, are these sort of approaches comparable? Which one is better? When do we use, uh, you know, approach A, uh, you know, as opposed to approach B? I hope we are thinking about all these different things. And finally, before I invite questions here is, uh, for those of you that have been joining us in this previous talk, you have noticed that the structure of this talk is completely different, right? There's an emphasis on the so-called scientific method, right? If you notice, you talk the story, right? There's a connection in this story Friday was telling. 
observation. Uh, I don't know how much of the scientific method people know here, but this is taught at undergrad, I guess. Uh, in our department, we teach that second year. Observation, you make an observation, you ask questions, you hypothesize, you perform some sort of experimentation, and then optionally, maybe you derive some sort of theory, right? This is what Friday was walking us through, right? Or problem statement. Uh, the observation was that, uh, uh, you know, thefts at Unza, yada, yada. But anyways, so if there are questions, um, the floor is open. It's really interesting. I always find this talk really interesting myself. Uh, so if there are questions, please ask away. Oh, 